So, how old were you when you first got on the ship? When I first got on the ship? I went in when I was 17. I got on the ship, I was about 17 and a half or 18. No, about 17 and a half, because I went to service for I was 18. I didn't want to miss the draft. The draft they drafted in at 10, you know, and I wanted to get what I wanted. I didn't want the Army or Marines, and I wanted the Navy because I didn't have to uh, walk, I mean, swim in the uh, mud and stuff like that. I was just swimming the ocean. So I got to swim in the ocean, all right, <laughs> five days and nights. <laughs> okay. What was your position on the ship? Like, did you man a gun or what? I was a gunner. Like a five-inch or something? Yeah. Was it like a five-inch? Uh, six inch. No, five inch. Yeah, five inch. That's the same way your, your uh, grandfather's on. In fact, he was just only 50 feet from me, and all the time we was uh, had at battle, say, I was here on this side of the ship. He was straight across from me on the other side, about 50 feet away, because the ship took, uh, the gun took up part of it. It's about 50 feet away. We stayed there, and we, that's where we fought all the time we was out there. You knew him? Yeah. Cool. Okay. Were you in. The Marine or a Navy, or were you in the Navy? Navy. Okay. There were some Marines on there, yeah. Oh, yeah. We were Marines. Um, what do you remember about the box that no one knew what was in it? The... The big crate that was... Oh, in yeah. oh yeah, I sat on there and drank coffee. <laughs> and sat down on the bomb, didn't know what was in it, didn't know what it was. We sat there, oh, that could be five or six sailors, but the Marines would be, in fact, this was a... a, a box like that and we were sitting on their box and they'd lean all the way around it like this you know and uh, they'd watch it because we a sailor he wants to he's I don't know why but they're always nosy so they would probably took the box off there was a guy standing up on the, in the brig up there bridge where the captain is watching us watching that box the two people they watched it from the time we put it on they put it on there to the time we let it off they didn't sleep no, th that took ships, different different ships, oh, oh. and uh, there's somebody watching us, and the Marines was around there with guns on it, and, and if they, we would have tore into it, they would have shot, because they were supposed to shoot us, if we, or anybody was supposed to uh, break open that box. That was that secret. It was a military secret, and it was a secret too, believe me. Like I thought they weren't, they were supposed to shoot anyone that went over the yellow line or something. Well, there's, I sat on a box drink coffee, and that bomb was in, the, in that box. I was sitting just like we were sitting right here, and the bomb, the bomb was right here. Now, they, they said there was two boxes, one yeah. they put in the hangar and one they put on the deck. Yeah, yeah. Was I was on the hangar. I okay. was <laughs> sitting on the, on the hangar there. So you were on the one that wasn't the The big one. <laughs> okay. Um, what did you think was in the big crate? See, like, what did you think it was in it? I didn't know. I just noticed some secret. I don't know. It could have been anything. As far as I know, I just noticed it's a military secret and they were supposed to get in it and nothing in it. They would shot us if opened it up right there. Because they was meant to say, well, I don't blame them, you know. Yeah. That's what they're supposed to do. Like, how many, like, Marines, or how was it protected, the big, the false crate? And was the real crate protected? I, all of it was protected by the Marines and guns just walking around like that, just waiting to tear it so they could shoot you, I guess. <laughs> That's about all I can tell you. Um, was there anything unusual about the trip from San Francisco? Going from San Francisco over there, uh, we got a suicide bomb plane. The bomb went straight through the ship, went through it and didn't blow up. Oh. Went all the way down through it and didn't didn't blow it up at all. So that hole come up here and water started coming in there. So uh, it, that was in my car, uh, car compartment. I bet you in the bunks, in other words. And I bet you Frank was in there too. I'm not sure your dad, your grandfather. I'm sure he was in there because that's in fourth division. And uh, didn't he, they have to close the door to stop it from? Yes, we sure did. And they was the, the I was eating breakfast that morning and he had beans for breakfast. And it was all over the deck and I did a like shotgun shot. And you're trying to get out of there and I had to get on my knees and crawl outside from from uh, mess hall and left it when, they, when the bomb uh, suicide hit us. And uh, it went right through the. The whole ship and then blow up it all. Had it killed a whole bunch of people, but it didn't. It just was lucked out on that one. Now that was that was before you went back to San Francisco. As before you went back to San Francisco. Okay. That's how come us back in San Francisco to come in and get us repaired, ship repaired. Yeah. Because we sealed it off. And I think it's I don't know how many got killed in there. There was probably 
six or eight or eleven or something like that. I don't know how many, but I forget now. It's so long ago, and we buried him at sea. You know, they put us put their legs here and put a, a shell and big hundred pound shell or whatever you want it in between their legs and tape it like that. And they put you on a slab like this right here. They lay on the slab, and then they uh, have the funeral, and then just raise you up and just slide off into the water. And you take the dog tags off, you know, and send them to the people. They was they buried uh, some of them didn't die right away. They died uh, later on, and they buried them, set them home or something. But then we dumped a whole bunch of them over the side and got killed in there. But once you left San Francisco and had carried the bomb, and once we left San Francisco, we come in for repairs, got repaired. I got a week off, and uh, after got that, well, then we got the repairs done, painted it up good, and got this, the uh, ship at Treasure Island. Got the bomb, put it on the ship, and it went under the ship. Now, by the way, I had a picture of it. And a guy called me from California oh, about a month ago that they had a movie picture that was going it over, and the movie was showing the ship going under the bridge in San Francisco, California, with the bomb on it. And the bomb, and nobody knew it was what it was, and nobody knew the bomb was on there. And they, just, they took a picture of it going under the bridge there, some secret thing. But they showed it on television in San Francisco oh, about a month ago. Wow. I wanted to get a hold of that, and I've been trying to get a hold of it. I'd like to get a hold of that. Okay. We'll see, we'll see if we can find that. Um. But, but when you made the crossing, you set a record. Hmm? Didn't you make a speed, oh, yeah, speed yeah, record? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, the old ship would do uh, 32 knots. And uh, well, a knot is a mile and an eighth. And it, uh, they opened that thing up and it went all the way across to uh, the island Tinian, the island. And that's where it unloaded the bomb. How long did that take? The, over there? To get over there. Oh, I don't know, day and night, I believe it was something like that, or the next day or something, maybe two days. No more than that. Really? Because they, they didn't even stop, man. They was, they was putting the good old man said, throwing the coals to that thing. <laughs> they got it over there, and uh, I, I was running a crane to unload it, and uh, the, the, the crane, it's the disc on it like this, and it's three discs, you know, and I was one of the, one of the cranes that picked it up. And this in here picked it up, this in here turned it sideways, and this in here lowered the boom and drove it down. And I was on one, this in here, on the left side. Power went out, and up in there, and sitting up in there about 50 feet, and the power went out of the, on, on the crane. So, boy, you talk about somebody getting and butt chewed out. <laughs> they did, and the electrician, he went down there and they hollered for him. He went down there and shipped it over to Mercy, you know, power, and then we let it down in a big barge out there, and they unhooked it, and they took it over to Island Tinian. And we raised it up while we uh, messed around like that. It got in and out of the harbor, and we took off to the Philippines. And the guy was there before we got, we never did make it, but, you know, got sunk out there. Uh -huh. Where were, you, where were you when the ship was torpedoed? When it was, I was on watch, up in, right up in the tall mast, and if I show you here, way there. How did you get that there? That's way up, let's see, right up in front, right up in there. Oh yeah, there you go. Was that the queen right there? That's, that's the front. See, these is, uh, this gun here is eight inch guns here, and eight inches there and there. There's nine eight inch guns on there. The rest of them was five inch guns, and, 20, and 40 millimeters, and 20 millimeters. I think there's 125 guns on that thing. And, uh, but I was right up in here, and that's the captain's quarters there. The, the bomb was right in here, under there here. There was See? one back up there. Yeah, there. yeah, there's the crane that I'd run, and it's set up here on the here, and we run the crane. It swings swing around, come on this side, and dumped it on this side over here. This is a hangar that where they shot this plane. Yeah, there's a plane right there shot off. They shoot the plane's off. It's, it, I think it was doing something like 60 miles an hour when the boat hit the other end uh, to, to, get, to get off, you know. They just spotted planes that spotted the plane the only time. And the, when they got that off, well, we moved on out, went to the target to the island over to, to uh, uh, I think a lady was going to in the Philippines. And it's all getting together there with all the 
admirals and, and uh, generals, General MacArthur and all them, it's going to go, and we was going to go have an invasion on Japan. That's going to be it, one way or another. We was going to whip those people, or they're going to whip us, one or the, whichever one didn't come up first. Not that we weren't going to lose either. So we dropped that bomb on there, and I was in the water. It was it already blowed the ship up? And I was in the water. It's, all of us is in the water that was on there. Some of them went down with the ship. Uh, there was 880, I believe, that was sunk. 317 picked up. And today, there's only 50 of us living. So there'd be like probably one per state? Yeah. 50 of us, more than that, I mean, it'd be the same thing, it'd average out like that. But I don't know what state they're from, which one they ain't got them. I know there's only 50 of us now living. And it's, it cut down, cut down, cut down, until it does. Wasn't this plane like going down with it and like there was boom? Yes, that way, it's the way it went down. <laughs> and there was like one of the guys that was in a life raft right when it was sinking and the plane was I was right up in this year top mast right up here and there was uh, six of us up there. And I, all I come out of there, I, mean, I was coming out on this side over here, and my clothes, my belt hung on, on the ship here and in the back, on the, the pants belt. So, in order to get, and it already pulled me under, in order, in order to get out of here, I take my shoes off, unbuckle my pants, and, and I'm dropping the pants off. And all I had on when they picked me up was my life jacket, a pair of socks, and underwear. That's all. Yeah, he got cold out there at night too. <laughs> Leave me and burn up daytime, cold at night. That's what I heard from much of. And uh, the yeah, that's where it was at there. And that's where I stayed. This all of them. It was oh god, all around us. It was a bunch of you know people. It was, it was what, eight, 317. Wasn't that many out there. More than that because they some of them left and sharks eat them up and they'd going down. Say well, I'll go here. I'm, I want water. Some water starving to death for water. They jump off. I'm going down to get me a drink. And they just go right down. You never see them no more. That's the end of them. One little boy, two of us, the twin boys. They're the only thing I know of, except the Sullivan brothers. That there was twins or our brothers that went together. So they let them uh, go together, and one got killed. One was picked up, but he went around from he swam from raft to raft to raft to raft. All over the place trying to find his brother, you know. And I tried to get him to stay there with us because I said, you, they, they ain't going to do no good to find him, you know, because he can't, you never know what's going to happen. Just stay here so the sharks don't get you. That didn't pay him no mind. I never seen him no more. I don't know what happened. I know he was going to another raft way over there, and, and within the next, that was the first, first day, is when it was happened. On the second day, we could drift in a park, drift in a park. And on I think, the third day, I couldn't see nobody. It was all, Nobody, nobody, me and the guy was on on that uh, cargo net, and uh, he was on this end, I was on this end, and when we going to get up on it here, the net was spinning like a log, it rolled up, and I'd climb up on this side, and he'd climb on that side, and we just were getting there, set, set a straddle of that. The sharks were coming by all over there, and it looked like millions of the doggone things, and they were big ones too, they were little ones. Come right beside you, and you're sitting on a raft, and they try to knock you off, you know. And it would get that one guy sitting on the other end, he got his heel right above his heel, it nipped him here, and cut it, and it started bleeding. I just knowed then that was, we, was, we was both gonna go. That blood going out, you know. But he took his, his excuse me, took his uh, shirt off, and wrapped that around it real tight, and it stopped it, thank goodness. And uh, that's why he went in, stayed out there. And he was getting crazy. I went a little nuts too. There's, there's uh, islands you see at night with lights on them, and there wouldn't be no island there. And uh, there's, some of them would swim to those islands, trying to get on, get back on the island ground. And uh, then I'd come to myself, and I know there ain't no islands. You know, I'd see light planes coming over. There were no planes coming over. Well, there was nothing. You you just, in your mind, you, you see that. You know, just went crazy. And the guy on the other end up here, he went completely nuts. And I mean, he's going to he was going to eat me up. You know, he had something to eat. He's hungry. I said, Well, he, he ain't going to eat me. You know, you know. And I had enough sense mind to last a little longer than him. And, but he he was nuts. And so when the chip come up to pick us up, I had to get, get off this end here 
and go down that end, tie the line, throw the line at us, and I went down there and tied it around his waist here. So they get him out, and then I went back, and there's hollering sharks all around us, and hollering, watch that shark, watch that shark. I said, I've been seeing them all five days and nights, ain't gonna worry about one, one little old shark. <laughs> and anyway, they, they drug him aboard, and they got, finally got me aboard. I couldn't walk, and my legs were sitting straddle that thing was paralyzed. It uh, took all the, uh, I guess, the circulation away from me. That's what they said anyway, and it, it, his legs are blue. And I, I could make a step maybe halfway between you and you and down I'd go. I couldn't, I just couldn't do it. That's when they picked me up. And uh, they took me to the Veteran Hospital ship. I went to see the captain at uh, the ship that picked us up, the register, and picked me up. I went to see him and talked to him. He owned a newspaper. Uh, I believe it was in Clarksdale, Mississippi. He owned it. And I went down to see him, talk to him. He was glad to see me. We went there and we had lunch together and I talked, and sat around and shot the baloney with him for about the rest of the day. And then I went back home, back to Illinois. And he, uh, but I, I could get that picture to you too, some way or another. You know, there's some several other things there. I didn't get a chance to look it up. I was looking it up, and Queen of got company. My wife's uh, sister, her brother. His, her husband, they come down and the kids come down and say, meet them at the house. That's the reason I said, better off, come over here and do it. Mm -hmm. and, uh, I never get a chance to say nothing over there to the kids. Anything else now? Oh, yeah. Was an SOS sent? Yeah, it was sent. SOS, I was up here and the SOS was sent. They didn't repeat, they didn't uh, answer it. But it was here. And uh, I heard the captain say, well, he said uh, the guy, officer of the day was up there too, on duty. And uh, he told him to pass the word to banded ship, because they wouldn't answer, nobody would answer it. So he passed the word to banded ship, everybody could hear him, and the rest of them just jumping off the way the best way he could, without him telling them. But they passed the word, hollering and screaming about it. Everybody's all you could hear is hollering and screaming, you know, have him get in the water. And, so you were right next Rolled to him up. when he yelled at I was right ship. above, yeah, right above him. Oh, I was so up nice. here. He was down under me, and there's a deck down way down here. Um, how did you get off the ship? I just opened this little hatch up up here, like that, and just stepped out in the water. And the water, by that time, the water was up to here. And then the time I got my lap jacket on, then that's when I'm hung in my pants, and that's when I stepped out in the water. What were your feelings when you first hit the water or when you first stepped into the water? Well, I thought, well, <laughs> this is not home, I guess. <laughs> but you are going to have to make the best of it until somebody picked us up. Maybe maybe they picked us up. The officer that called in the SOS on us, he couldn't get through. He he stayed on the ship and called him, kept trying to call, 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 and couldn't get nobody. No. Okay. He stayed on the ship. He, he never didn't make it. How many men were in your group during the first night? Oh, I don't know. It's probably you know, the whole round. It was probably, geez, oh God, he got me there. I'm just thinking about it. all of them was on there. It was 317 picked up, and uh, I would say there's probably 400. It was all in the whole area in there. But as far as the group, after it drifted apart, they were just this this guy, me and this guy here, and uh, it was probably a hundred miles. From away from the, the other bunches over here, and they, everybody just drifted apart, you know, drifted apart away. I couldn't see nobody. I couldn't nothing. Uh, just be just the he and I. That's the only ones I could see, cause the rest of them we were too far from them. We was probably, I'd say probably, it said something like 100 miles. It drifted apart. But I know I didn't see nobody. He had except him. Um, what kinds of sharks were there? What kind of sharks was it? Well, it was, uh, well, let's see what you call it. I didn't see no bull sharks. No bull sharks? No, I didn't, I didn't see any of those. It was uh, black tips and uh, uh, I don't know what the others were. whites? Yeah. No, there were no whites. Oh, wow. No, when they left out there, didn't they? I'm pretty sure there was a tiger. Oh, yeah, yeah, there was tiger, tiger sharks too. And they called them tiger what, sharks. black tips or red. Yeah, black tips, I believe, and same tiger shark. They was all mixed up, except I did not see any tiger, or, uh, ti uh, tiger ships uh, there at all. Just those two, I know as long as, I'd say an average 10, 12 foot long. Oh, gosh. 
Okay. Um, what was it like in the water? Cold at night, hot in daytime. And anyway, I'd just burn up at uh, daytime and get down in the water, get off, get cooled off for a while, and then get back up on the thing. Then at night, you'd have to get down in the water to get warm. To, you know, was, the wind, the air was cold, and you'd have to get warm to get back up there. And you get warm, and you get warm, and you get back up there. Had to do that maybe twice a night, twice a during the day when the sun was coming down so hard on you. Um, how did you survive? Like, what kept you alive? Okay, uh, that's, that's a different question. I, I can't tell you what kept me alive, but I always thought about my mother and my dad and my sister and my family. And that's just what kept me going. I literally believe that's the only thing that kept me going. I wanted to live. I wanted to get back to them. I even thought, well, uh, they won't know what happened to me if I don't get back. You know, they say, well, he's, he went down the ship and he got sunk or something like that and blowed up and he got sick. But, uh, I know how they would felt, wonder how he died, which I went to several people. His houses since then and talked to the, their, their mother and father that was on the ship that went down. I talked to them, several of them. And uh, they felt and was glad that I went to come to them and seen them and talked to them because they wanted to know exactly how he was. In fact, I had one call me from Memphis, uh, Texas, it's like out there close to Denver, I guess, not Denver, uh, Fort Worth, Fort Worth, Texas. Dallas. Memphis, Texas, you know where that's at? It's, uh, it's out there, well, it's in, in, uh, in Texas anyway. And uh, I talked to them and told them about it. Some of them even called me on the phone. One from Memphis, Tennessee called me on the phone a lot. And he's, he, uh, he was a good friend of mine that brought up there. and. He uh, made it off the ship, but he didn't make it nowhere. His eyes, should I tell her? His eyes was on his head, blew out, and they're just hanging here like that. And they, uh, another guy come over, his arm was cut off or something wrong with him. So they decided, I talked to both of them, he said, help me, help me. I said, man, I can't help you. I just can't help you at all. That's, this is first night. And, uh, first day, that was the night when it went up, 12.05, I think it was, when it shot it, blowed it up. And this was about a half hour or so after that. You could see him from the moonlight, the light of the water, I could see what was happening. So they just locked arms, him and the other, get a hold of it, and they went down. They just went down. They could they wouldn't, they wouldn't never make it, no way. Just a matter of just suffering it out, but they never make it. Yeah. What did you eat? I'm pretty sure there wasn't much. Uh, <laughs> I'd shoot good fish. Yeah. I grabbed a, a fish come by like this year. Shark was there and they got pilot fish, you know, sharks have. You know what a pilot fish is on? Okay, I went back and I grabbed it. And I got a hold of him and I held on to him. And I tucked him a bit down in on him and, you know, and bit him. And I did the blood come out, so I sucked the blood into out something. So when I did, I, got sick, I threw him over back over. I got so sick, I, as sick as I ever been in my life. I've never been that sick, my whole life. So that's the thought I had to eat, nothing after that. There's no knowing nothing nowhere around except the United States, straight down and six miles deep where we went down at. Gosh. That's too, too, I couldn't reach the bottom. Nobody could there. Um, what was the worst part about being in the water? What was the worst what? What was the worst part about being in the water? Well, getting cold, hungry, and wanting something to eat, and water to drink, all the water around you, you couldn't get drinking at all. And uh, that, that's the worst part of it. And we were waiting on somebody to come to help us out, get, get us. Great. When did you know you were going to be rescued? Well, on the fourth day, I think it was, late at night, and this plane come over, and he, I seen it circling around, and we saw everybody was waving. He and I was waving at him, holding up his old shirt that he had that, uh, that he saved from wrapping around his foot, leg. And uh, so I figured we, they'd know where we was at then. It's just a matter of time. I didn't know how long, but a matter of time. I said, hurry up, hurry up, please come on, come on, you know, hurry. So. Uh, 
that's when they picked us up in the next day. Okay. So did that plane, was that the uh, Gwen's plane? Yeah. So so Gwen saw you? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, he said he'd come over, he'd come over and he'd see this, all of us in the water, you know, and all of them just where he's at, and he radioed in and told them it was a ship or something, the oil spilled, what it was seen, and he seen that oil slick, and he went down to see what it was, and seen the people over there, and then he cut radioed in and said, sharks is just eating us all up to get somebody out here, so they ship ships out there. I think five or six of them went out there. Some of them burnt the engines up trying to get there to pick us up, and they didn't even know what, uh, we were sunk until he spotted us, and it's supposed to keep touch with us, but we couldn't get in touch with them because that was secret, where we was at, where the fleet was gathering at, there's all military secret. Nobody answered, radio silence, day and night. And that's the reason they didn't get nothing back to us, because they nobody did shut them off, that's the way to do it. So that's why. When did you know, oh wait, I just asked that one. Um, what ship picked you up? Rester. Rester. Destroyer. Rester. Okay. What were your feelings then? I looked up and thanked somebody. <laughs> well, it was, that's what I was so happy. It's my that day in my life. I've never been that happy and ain't been that happy since. <laughs> that was good. Good day. How long after did you stay in service? Well, I stayed in there until 46. I was in a wheelchair in uh, Guam and Okinawa. I was in the hospital over there. And they uh, put a thing like this. The old doctor couldn't walk. Doctor in the hospital. He hung a thing up on like a clothes hanger like this. He was in, in, sitting down in the hospital bed, in the bed. So he hung me up on this here and made me hold it like that hold his way up here, you know. And uh, he knew then, but I was going to put some weight on my legs. You know, as I get tired, he's going to put leg weight on my legs. And that's what he wanted me to do, walk, get my legs circulating. That's what he wanted to do. So I was done there after about, oh, I don't know, three or four weeks every day, two or three times a day. And the nurses would come along, pick me up, hang me up. I was like hanging out clothes and on the clothesline or something. And that's why Eventually, the circulation got back a little bit, a little bit, but when I come home, I was still in a wheelchair. How much weight did you lose in the water? Huh? How much weight did you lose in the water? Well, it, uh, I think it was 20, 26 something pounds, I think I lost in, yeah, 26, I believe it was. 26 pounds I lost in the water. Huh. Okay. How did this impact your life? Like, how did the being in the Navy on the USS Indianapolis impact your life? What? Uh, how did being on the U.S. Oh, it's good. Loved it. I just loved it. It's like going home. That's my home. I loved it. To the day I went down, I still loved it. I still do to this day. We're taking the care of it through all that stuff that we went through. All right. When did you learn that you would carry the atomic bomb on your ship? After I got picked up in a, on a hospital ship. They picked us up that day and on a hospital ship. I found out that they bombed that the war was over. They bombed us. I said, oh my goodness, they should have done it yesterday, you know, I was talking about. It might have been all right then, but now, is this the way the world is going? All right. How did you feel after you learned that you had delivered the atomic bomb? Felt good. Felt good. Did even with them rascals shooting us and killing us. <laughs> That's what we felt. Why do you think that the Navy court-martialed Captain McVeigh? Because, I tell you, it's General MacArthur and Admiral Nimitz was a fighting, is arguing about fighting, is fighting all the time anyway together. They was arguing about this, they were arguing about that, and arguing about this, and arguing about that. So the only, and uh, the Captain McVeigh, his dad was Admiral, and he was in on that bunch. So I guess he said something at the meeting in his head that General MacArthur and Admiral Nimitz didn't like. So I said, well, we'll take it over this after they had it in court, Mark, had it in court and went through it. He says, well, we'll just do it the best we can. They just court martial. That's the way they done it. Okay. How do you feel about the Navy court martialing Captain McVeigh? I feel bad. I think, truthfully, if he hadn't have done it, I believe he'd have been living probably to this day or he wouldn't have been lived a long time after that. After he shot himself, he he'd never done that. But they called him and kept at home. They kept aggravating him, aggravating him so much that it drove him crazy. 
we're getting phone calls and they say, well, you killed my son and you this and that, you know, it's all blamed on him after the court martial. They blame, everybody blamed the captain. I didn't blame him, I still don't blame him because I know what he said to do. He's supposed to zigzag, that's what he'd done, and at the last point he's kept it straight, thought he'd, he'd get there in a hurry, he'd probably run a little late on time, I don't know. To that fact, I don't know, I wasn't the captain at that time, but I do know it, it, that it wasn't his fault. How do you feel about 56 years later that Captain McVeigh's name was cleared? I felt good. I'm glad. I felt good. It should have been done to start with, but it didn't, so I feel good about it. Have you ever been to the memorial? Yep. In fact, your grandpa took me. Okay, and this is a really recent question. <laughs> How do you feel about them painting little things on it? The what? How do you feel about them painting it? They painted a little bit of color on. They painted the, the seals. Rather than it used to be just granite, they yeah. went in, in the marine symbol and the navy symbol. They painted red. I didn't know. I didn't know that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's, See, I, I we just saw that on the news. Yeah. I didn't know nothing about that. I hadn't been up there since the. Uh, that took me yeah. up there. Because a lot of the survivors oh. apparently think it's like really disrespectful. And they don't like it. They don't. They don't like it. They don't like that it's been painted. Which I actually think it's a big improvement because they spent like two years painting. Was it painted like a, a flag or something? Well, yeah, just just the seal, the symbols, the navy oh, symbol, okay. and the, yeah. and the oh, yeah. marine patch symbol. They yeah. painted it red and gold. Yeah, and so you show up or something. And yeah. they repainted so the letters because they were chipping and stuff. Well, and I think it's actually a very good improvement. But people are saying, no, it's as bad as someone doing graffiti on it. Well, well, I look at it. I feel about it is the. Painted or not painted, it's there, it shows up, it's a memory of the whole thing, everything. All the people's on there and everything. And uh, everybody, you can take ten people and start from this end here and ask them the same question all the way through, and if you get to the end, it's all going to be different. So I, I, I figured if, if it's improvement, fine. If you don't, why? Well, that's it. Either way, it's there and it's a memory. Uh, how did you deal with five days of just nothing? Just, I mean, did you? Did you do something in your mind, or did you just? Yeah, my mind's working all the time. You see, and after certain days, you it just kind of fades. Your mind finally fades away. No for no water, no nothing. You know, your body just just gives away. Uh, I remember it was kind of just weak, like in a dream. You know, it's like in other words, you having a bad dream at night or something. And when you wake up next morning, well, you know, you had had a dream. That's the way it's about. That's the way I feel. Just a bad dream. Did you ever sleep? Well, it's like this year. Then you wake up and look, see where shark was at. And you could feel them, you know, as they come by. You, could, you've seen the water, and you flush, flush water like that. Something over here, you feel it. Have you ever tried that? No. You, you take, take a tub of water, and you get on this side of the tub, and you and don't even look. You look up there and wave it here. You can still feel it over here on the. And it's this hand here, you know. The waves will go through the water. Since that's the way, you can feel that water, and you wake up. That way, you know the sharks are. You knew when you went to sleep, the sharks are. You just kind of doze. You didn't go to sleep, really. You just, just doze off. Close your eyes about it. Sun was so hot, you had to close them in the daytime and part of the day. Then you wake up and look and see around you like this. You know, you know where the sharks was at or nothing. Did you look, I guarantee there's one there. And they had one old shark there. He wasn't going to give up. He's bound to determine he's going to eat me and that guy won. One of us or both of us. And he just wouldn't give up. He stayed oh, about as here as that door there from us. All the time that rascal stayed there. That's the one who bit his foot. And uh, he just wouldn't leave. When, left, when we got up and they pulled us out there, and that sucker was still there. <laughs> you know, right? <laughs> we bye bye him. <laughs> and the guy's on his ship, hollering, Watch that shark, watch that shark. I said, I've been seeing him for five days, and now he's sitting right there. And so he stayed there and waited on us. I think he's waiting on us to kick the bucket, so his old man says. And, Pass up all over and he get him some meal there, that's what I think he's doing. Alright. Did you ever like did it rain or did was it like a big storm one night or something? One night they come in a pretty good little shower of rain that night and I held my head back like this, tried to catch some of it and I couldn't. Well, that stinks. It, yeah, I know what <laughs> that's the only time it come in, the rest of it was pretty much dark and, and dark, I mean dark, dark. When I turn the water. So you're only like you could you didn't know there was a shark until you like felt the waves or something. Yeah, you can feel the waves. You can feel when a shark comes from behind like that. You can feel that 
his water, you know, had moved down there, so you feel that his legs, you know, is there. You just know he's there, but it's whereabouts. You don't know where he's down below, you're on the side over here, ready to come in on you or not. Well, I had him up when his owner, like this here, the owner and make legs hanging like this on. I've raised up my foot like that and let him go on by. Let yeah. him legs, let him go by, and then take my fist to hit him. You know, once you hit them, they it scares them. You know, they take off. They'll just take off for a while. They'll be back. They'll be back. But uh, you just hit them with your fist or you kick them with his leg or whatever you can. Like, They'll come up to you like this year. The thing about a shark is their nose sticks out above their mouth. And when they run to, to bite you like this, to bite you on that thing, you couldn't. He'd have to turn over on his side to get sideways, in other words, you know. So that'd be your advantage. He'd turn over on his side so he could get a bite on you. He couldn't bite you this way because he hit you with his nose, you know. His nose is in the way, in other words. He'd move it out of the way, it'd be all right. But he'd turn over this way, he'd get you. Was there a hammerhead there? Uh, is there any hammerheads? Yeah, there was hammerheads. So... That wasn't too bad. No, the hammer wasn't too bad, no. Oh. Them old black tips are... They were probably yeah, the worst. They were that bad, bad stuff. They're not known to be the most dangerous. I don't know. Uh, hammerheads didn't seem to be bothered. Uh, it seemed, they just seemed like going on their own way, you know. Wow. But them others, they didn't, they didn't like you being there with them. I didn't like being there with them either, but... Uh, it's uh, one of those things you have to put up with, I guess. Did you have a life jacket, or were you just on the wall? No, I had on um, the cape. They call them cape hunts, life jackets. That's what I had on. Okay. I had the life jacket on, my underwear, and a pair of socks. That's all I had. A lot of protection. There's a lot of protection. No knife. <laughs> I told I tell this other guy on the first day I was out. I said, if I had me a knife, why? Well, I'd get me something to eat now and hurt. <laughs> I'd give you one of them sharks, I'd gut him right quick. And I'm pretty sure if there weren't a big sharks. If he didn't get sharks. me, I'd get him. One of us would get something to eat. <laughs> but uh, I didn't have nothing. I was on his territory. He, he knew he was in his territory. It wasn't on mine. I was on his. And he didn't like it. So that's the way it all was. God, there was a lot. Like those, see those uh, slats out there like that? That's the way them things was down under. That's how thick they was. You set this thing right up on it. That's how thick them things was. But there's sometimes you could down see them. Some might be three or four foot down. Some a little barely could see, and some of them you'd be right on top of the water, coming at you, you know, like that, trying to get you, knock you off. This is what it's trying to do, knock us off there, see what the heck was going on. Just curious what it was doing. But uh, that's enough of them. Did the Japanese submarine surface? Huh? Did 158 yes. surface? The, the Jap submarine? Yes, he did. Near you? No, yeah, same about the same. I shot, oh, I'd say, mm, if you go here, top of the hill up there like that. You know, go out here on the road and go up on top of it. I'd say maybe a oh, thousand foot, let's just say roughly. And uh, he'd come up and shine the spotlight. Which they give you a movie film they showed all of us films in, in so the country. So they did see you. They huh? saw you. No. They didn't. They uh, shined that spotlight down, and he and I got down on in the water on this side of that uh, net. We rolled up. We got down on this side here, and the ship was over. Sub was over here. He was shining spotlights over here to see where is that, because we shined. We have found out that when they, they sunk a ship like that, they raise up and they couldn't get machine guns and it's a choochie to keep from you giving a location where they was at. Did they you know, shoot? They didn't know. No, they didn't shoot. They called me and he and I got back over here on the back side and didn't see us. But the rest of them, I don't know, they'd probably done the same thing, but he didn't shoot no shots. But he did shine spotlights all the way around. He's done that. Well, I was, I read something and it said, I don't think that the captain of the ship, the submarine was going to shoot anyone because he needed all the proof could get that he sunk a ship. Well, at that time and point, you don't really, the captain probably didn't know it was going to shoot him. He, well, he figured he about they would have. At that time, you know, you don't think so much about something like that. It's just think about surviving so, something to get on to. In fact, when it's this guy that I, was, I found, I was sunk, I jumped, I got off, I was swimming, I swam right into this here thing. Told him it rolled up, it blew off the side of the ship. We had it tied on there and it blew right off. And I got on this thing here, and this guy that's on here with me, 
he kept hollering, help, help, help. We got something, he couldn't, you know, he couldn't say nothing. So I kept hollering, and come this way, and I'm gonna keep talking to you. Come on, come on, come on. And that way you follow me with my voice. And he just kept coming that way, and he bumped right into it. And he, it's the way he got saved. But I got on it first, I just got lucky to get on it. I don't know how, I, I started swimming, I didn't care to get it. I afraid the thing gonna catch a fire. And I sure didn't wanna burn up. So uh, that's how, come, how he got away. Then he went to Kentucky. I mean, he died, you no, know, he was post office in Bowling Green, Kentucky. He died uh, about, well, I'd say six or seven years after he got out of service. He was a young man. Right. He couldn't take it no longer. He just, it bothered him so bad. He just couldn't take it no longer. He died. I tried to call his mom and dad, but uh, get no answer from him. They brought the Japanese captain over to testify. Yeah, I, was, I seen. I met him. I didn't meet him. Uh, I met his wife and his daughter. I mean, I was up to that meeting that okay. time. And I talked to them. They talked pretty good. And I, I told them I didn't hold a grudge with them. But if it'd been me, me, it would be the same thing. You know, right, right reverse, it'd been the same thing. And they kind of, they they pretty, pretty nice people. They wouldn't bet off. What did you think about them bringing the captain over to testify in the court martial? Uh, <laughs> First time it's ever been done. I don't think it should have been done. But he actually helped the captain, didn't he? Yeah. Yes, he did. Yeah, he helped him. But, he sent uh, a letter. There's a copy of it in that big binder. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I think. He said he would have sunk the ship regardless of the zigzag. Regarding right. The right. Oh, yeah, he, they would have sunk it anyway. He was out there. They was out there waiting. Something okay. went through. But I, I don't know. I guess it's just the feeling. They feel different, you know. When you uh, spent a war with these guys, I understand. Yeah, the rest of them, uh, man, some of them would have tore his tongue out if he got a hold of him. Uh, but I, I wouldn't have never, it's just his job, he didn't do this, what we would have done. Same thing, uh, that's why I looked at it. And, but him bringing him over here, let him testify against it, uh, it didn't gain anything or didn't lose anything, I don't guess. But anyway, he wound up, the captain got killed, killed himself or something. I, I don't know, just my way, I don't think he should have done it. That's the way it goes, it's wartime, you know, what's what. Is Mashiara Hamitsu still alive? Who? Is, I can't pronounce his name, is he still alive, the commander of the submarine? Oh, it's Japanese? Yeah. No, I think he died. Yeah, he died, I'm sure he did, yeah, he died. He should have died before he shot the submarine, shouldn't he? Been now, I'd be better off. It changed a lot of people's lives. <laughs> yeah. That's the way it was. It, uh, I wouldn't go through it again now. I, I just wouldn't go through it again. I don't want to go through it anymore. If I had seen it, you know, that movie, they're going to make a movie. I told you, you that. You told me that, yeah. And a movie? Movie, yeah, they're going to make a movie out of, out of, about the ship. So they called me and I got the uh, paperwork and uh, they signed it and sent it back. So I called Murphy and uh, them up to find out what's going on for sure. They said, yeah, that, uh, you know, go ahead and sign it, please sign it. So there's four of them at that time, that was the first week, four of them was already signed and I'm sure there's one of them, maybe one or two that were signed, but that many, so the rest of them overpowered them anyway. And, uh, but, uh, I don't know what I was gonna say about that. I signed the papers, they give me a dollar, Send a dollar and check, you know, to make it legal. All right. Send uh, Colts, Indianapolis Colts, with Bob King. They put up, I don't know how many million dollars they put up for that, this movie. And uh, so somebody else put up something. And then uh, I think it's the city of, city of Indianapolis, I think, put up something. Anyway, there's a movie star out there somewhere. He put up the rest of them, picked up $110 million is what it's going to cost to make it. Wow. So they already got the money. Great. And they was building this ship here, which they won't put in them. They probably just held it out, you know. Right. But plastic guns or something there on it to make it out. It's phony. And that's what it'll be in there, because they got to sink it anyhow. So I understood the officer and just said, when it, I talked to her, them, that they was already making the ship for this. A full it'll size? Be, or, or? It'll be full size, probably. Full really? Size. But it's actually, that metal don't cost that much, you know, really. Okay. But uh, there's the welders to start welding it up. But there's all of these here things here, they're just like this year, they get a piece of pipe stick up there and weld around it yeah. and be the stack and all like that. 
they don't probably want none of this electronic stuff on sure. there too much. Back here in the back, they had uh, this is uh, right here. That's a uh, depth charges. As you roll them off the back here like this, you just roll them off the back. Do you know what depth charges? They go down in the water like a oh pipe just go down like this here and you're in a sub, on a submarine down in the water and it gets down it's supposed to get down and hit the submarine or down close to it and it explodes and it sink the submarine. Well, that might have helped. Yeah. So and they got them on here. I think you had see four, about six, six or eight of them on here, and they just push them off like that. Ship would go around over where it was at. But we didn't have no sound from the water, no depth sounder. We didn't have that. We had the air, but no depth. That's why if we'd had that, we'd been, you know, it'd been hard to pick the submarine up. But then we didn't have it. And as I just pushed them off the side, back, back there. And uh, let's see, yeah, this, this is right here. These are all life rafts, right? On the top. It's patches, I think. Really? Might be rafts up there. It could be. Anyway, your dad was over on you know, this side here. I mean, your grandfather. I was over straight across the ship over on the other side. We had five inch guns here. So over here, one here and here and one These over there. These little tiny things right here? Those little tiny yeah, things? Yeah, yeah, that's where it was at. The one there, one there, one here, and one here on each side. Plus, right next to this, we had 40 millimeters here, like that. And then 20 millimeters up all up in here. Um, when you were sailing that really fast one, was it like hard to sleep because it was bouncing so much over the waves? Sure. Yeah. Yeah, when it was like sailing to deliver the bomb. Oh no, it was so heavy, it just, it just went right straight through the water. You know, just like a regular boat around here. And then if it went them down, they all do that when you got turn big swells, you know, it'll go up down a little bit. But it, as far as bumping like that, it, I don't recall it ever, that thing ever doing that, except uh, one time it was north of Japan. Because they sent this ship up there to, uh, the, the Japs was landing on, uh, uh, where was they landing at? I can't think of a place in Alaska. Alaska, but I'm trying to think of the name of the town. Uh, those, yeah, the islands, what yeah, the Aleutian they, Islands. They, yeah, there. they landed on that. And we was trying to keep the ship away from there. We sent up there and worked that for a while. And they stayed for a while. But, uh, and they did land there, you know. Huh. They did land on there. Oh, yeah, I didn't know the Indianapolis was sent up to. Yeah, they sent us up there. And the water, it was so cold up there, you can't believe it. It was cold now. And this thing would go down like that and come up. If you was up in here like that, and the waves would come over the ship, it, that water would freeze before it hit the deck. Really? Yeah, it did. Honest to God, it did. So you're up there in, in the winter, I assume? Or? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Oh, it was cold. That's on the north side of Japan. We went up through that way. Oh my God, it was cold. That's cold as I ever been. The refrigerator wouldn't have been in the center of wheat, couldn't have been cold. But all that deck here, they had lines drawn and put around all the way around it. Life lines, you know. And if you just fell out there and went across, you still have something. They had regular lifelines there, but they had these other lines that go back to the back to the cabins, and you could pull your way back in there. From those. So they had them stretched all the way around the ship that way. And everybody was ordered to stay inside. But you know how sailors are and different people. They go, I want to see what's going on out there. Yeah, they just get sucked off over, and so you could catch on that line and put them back in. Now, were there any other battles? You know, the battle, the battles of the Indianapolis was in. We, uh, when were you on the uh, side of the Indianapolis? I went on there in '41. Oh, so right after the war, right, right after the war right. started. Yep. There was well, I volunteered and went in there. Okay. Now, there's one interview where the guy says that the ship was in Pearl Harbor just before on December 6th. Yeah, that's right. And then it left in a hurry. That's right. Is that? Have you heard that? Yeah. You think right. is there, you think that's true? Or? Yeah, I do. Yeah, it was. So that, but that would indicate that they knew it was coming. Yeah, they knew the they they knew the, yeah they knew the whole fleet was coming, but then nobody believed them. There's a radar, you know, and they found it from coming in. Because so they went up way up around uh, oh up around I guess Alaska up there or somewhere, and they come down this way, and then they come back in to us. But they was way up. They weren't remembering like it's going out of the way from us at all. But the whole fleets and everything, the planes went over and told them it's out there where it's at. After that. And they, 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 I believe, they just come right in for a while. So, so why do you think they didn't? They, they sent they sent the Indy out 
Yeah, they yeah. left all the other battleships and everything. Yeah, in there. there's there's somebody, <laughs> something, something. Else. And it seems we, it's almost like we're inviting them to attack yeah, us so we right. can go. In, but of course, yeah. the aircraft carriers weren't there. Yeah, so. their airplanes just took off. They shoot them down, and well, they didn't bomb this and here because it, like you say, it was took off. But the the, the uh, Arizona and them, the battleships, was it's still over. So I got a picture. I got the little frame like this here. But that about as big as this right here. To it. the Arizona is down on the water now. So. Now, was the Indy at Midway or Guadalcanal or any of those Iwo Jimas or any of those other battles? Oh yeah, it, I, I think he's in. Uh, I think we was in seven battles. Okay. In total. Some of the little island like Palalu, they just go through. We had there, and they just opened these guns up here and just cleaned out any land nobody in there. Just cleaned the cleaned the park. There's everybody was on there is gone. Trees and all, they just clean it right out. Yeah. They turn around the side and go down here. Come another one to come by here and come by. He'd do the same thing. Wouldn't be nothing left there but just the dirt. And, uh, but they, uh, a lot of islands that they bad past, like Iwo Jima was rough. That was a rough one. And Okinawa wasn't too bad. That's where we got suicide bomber at that time. Stayed in the harbors of Okinawa. And going on, I got this seven of them, I think it was. Seven battles it was in. And it was in the Battle of the Sea. You know, it was the Japanese fleet. And this near was, he was in there with it. We had these little planes like that flying over. You know, way up, way up there, and looking down there, was telling us, you know, they shoot, they shoot, and tell them, well, you were too far over north, too far south, or degrees, you know, headed back the other way. And it was up in there. One time, it was anchored somewhere. I think it was Image General. I believe we won. Yeah, Plano, I think. And this little plane here was flying around. I always took a little bomb with them. Flying around over the island, you know, and we went in there, I think, for recreation or something. I don't know what it was for now, but they seen this uh, whale docked up next to the water, and they thought it was a submarine docked in there from up here they could see, and they dropped that little bomb on that whale. <laughs> they bombed a whale? <laughs> yeah, they bombed it. He thought the water took off. You, know, you could see the water going. And they laughed. Everybody laughed about it. <laughs> you couldn't tell a whale from a battleship. <laughs> but that's the truth. That had happened there. You were on the ship and they bombed the whale? Yeah, they was, uh, I was on there when they bombed it. To, uh, we all laughed about it. Because <laughs> the negative submarine ain't going to make that much difference, you know. Yeah. That much splash you're going on after you bomb it. Was the whale like beached or something? Yeah, it beached itself up there. <laughs> Probably crow, uh, got, you know, somehow or another, all the noise and everything, and bombing and going on and all that, bombarding and stuff. He's probably went up in there. Him. They seen him on a little plane, seen him, and the bomb dropped a bomb on him. Poor whale. <laughs> well, they didn't know what it was yeah. at the time. So, um, what happened to your shirt originally when you were jumping off the ship? Yeah, what? what happened to your shirt when you jumped off the ship? And he caught his belt buckle, or his belt, oh, yeah, or belt pants. buckle. His pants got caught. Not his, not his. Yeah, but the man's yeah, pants right here, buckled here, caught me here and here, and pulled me down under the water. When you were rescued, you said he didn't have a shirt. Didn't even have a pants on either. But what happened to your shirt? Oh. Oh, well, I don't know. <laughs> we might want to wear one. Probably yeah. sleeping her. You know, I was up there in the radar here, and I was probably didn't, didn't but I know it didn't have one. The guy's a, he's a picture of me and this other guy in Life Ralph, if you've ever seen the film. And sitting on a raft out there in the water, just the two of us. You've probably seen a few, see, watch, uh, what do they call it, Sharks? Shark Week? Shark Week, no, yeah. I don't watch Shark Week. You ever watch it at? I've watched videos, but it hasn't been the shark attacks. I don't like sharks. Well, I mean, it's, it's, it was, it was there, you see them in there, they're bringing the Indianapolis up there. That was the best and I know and, why that, they and it's factory it. out there on that thing. I was, me and him, and, and that, when he picked us up, they was taking eight millimeter films of us, which they converted it over later. So the two of you on the law, on that rope log? Showed me on that log. Showed me I think I've seen log. that, yeah. It's me and him. Really? Yeah. I was on one end of it, he was, I was on this end here, and he was on that end. Then it showed us up there after they picked us up, was leaning up against a, a deck. So he was sitting here and I was sitting here. You see, after it showed us, after they picked us up, you see us sitting there. That shows that on there too. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I've seen that. Yeah, if you, you, you see, if you ever look at your set, 
I think it's the only two two places they showed it. Have you ever talked on Shark Week before? Into what? Like, have they ever intervie interviewed you on Shark Week before? On Shark Week, yeah, I had uh, uh, Channel Eight come out one time and and uh, interviewed me. And they come up to the house and asked me, oh, I don't know, it took about a half hour or something like that. They went through all of that stuff you go through and then put it on and pad it in paper. And uh, Robin come up to there, Robin and uh, your dad come up there at the, where I worked at one time and took me out for breakfast or lunch, I forget which one it was, lunch I think. And uh, we was talking about Frank then. And that's when we got to make when me and Dave got together and, and Robin too, she was in on it. Surprised she ain't here today. Well, it's Sunday. She's got to take a day off sometimes. <laughs> yeah, no, she take, she's funny. She's a funny little gal who's up there and her now. Is, we, we walk down to the, from the Western Hotel, walk down the river down there to the uh, statue thing down there, the monument. Then we walk back. It's funny, little boys, I don't know whether I'd been up there about that one time. I was going to go last year and I said, no, heck, it's too much. On me, but the little boy come up. My old ribbon, I mean, a rose or something. We took down there, and uh, that woman that uh, her that was her son. She writes me all the time letters, cards, school. She's a teacher in school, I guess. And uh, I answer them and ask to her back to thank them and all like that. Kind of thing. I write a little note in there. One time I sent uh, little boys was in the first grade in school, and they, uh, and I went and got some of these. Uh, what do you call it? Like silver, like gold dollars, you know, but two silver dollars from the bank. I got uh, two of them, one for each one, and sent them back to them. They thought they'd, I'd sent a bunch of gold. <laughs> they was enjoyed. They enjoyed that. They wrote back. She sent pictures of them, smiling a little, a little face, you know. Um, darn, I just lost it. Um, yeah. Have you ever gone to the reunions? Huh? Have you ever gone to the reunions? I went to one. Like how one, uh, one, one reunion? Yeah. You know, went to one. His, uh, Grandpa took me up there. What was it like and there? His mother was up there, huh? What was it like there? It was, uh, I liked it. What did they, like, did they have any, like... Had a little meeting about everything, didn't they? You? You've been up there, haven't you? I went, yeah, I went up to the same one I think you went to. Or yeah, same one I went to, yeah. That is <laughs> pretty good. Yeah, they just have a reunion this past summer. They do it every other year now. Don't yeah, they? now they're going to have one this year. They're going to have one this year. They are going to have one this coming yeah, year. Yeah, said it's in the paper. Okay. I'm sure. It, yeah, I'm sure it did. Are they always at you? Uh, and you know, I got something else I'd like to. And I should have brought it and let you took a picture of it. I won't give it to the to the uh, Indianapolis place up there. I won't give it to them. But a guy bought this his hat like this. That. Uh, in Virginia where the ship was made at. And they was the workers on that ship. They, on the, on the, they made the ship they were working on there. They was on there when it went out and shook, had a shakedown. That was 1920 something, 28 or 29. It's got right on there and they wrote their names and the data and it's a the guy bought it uh, to me. He went up in Virginia on a truck we're driving. He drive for uh, Scott Trucking. He went for he seen it and he bought it for me and he brought it back and gave it to me. And this thing is I tell you, you got to pick it up real easy to keep them falling apart. All <laughs> so bad. rotted, you know. And it's got 1925 or 28, I think it is, or 29 or something. That's when the ship was made to, this was ship made to shake down the crews. Um, we got it like that and went out and then they come back and they finished it up. And went out and uh, I guess they had 32 was when they sent about. But this is, they started a long time ago. It took about five, six years to build one of them things. It's a big ship, oh, yeah. yeah. So I think the 28, I should have brought that down here. I'd take a picture of it and send it to, to your dad, so he might like it. I don't know right where he does or not. Well, it would be interesting to see that, yeah. It's he did, I'd just take a picture of it and send it to her. Okay. Send it to him, let's yeah. Sure. You give it to Robin, let him bring it. It's a regular old hat band come around like this here, a sweat band, I'd call them, you know, just come around and cut the top over like this. They took it off like that and signed their names on it here.
they not only get his own. You got anything else, honey? Nope. Huh? Is that all? Um, <laughs> no. That's enough, ain't it? <laughs> it's good talking to you, though. You too, thank you.